flew on a journey here, and I am back with episode two of Tipsy Tarot. So I thought about pouring my drink into something prettier, but then I realized that you guys are my friends and you don't care that I'm 27 and dump liquor into fast food cups. So if you can, grab a drink. I'm drinking Coke and Crown Black Label. I forgot what I was drinking for a second, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so Tipsy Tarot today is going to be a little bit different. Instead of d a couple of decks that I've pulled out, I have turned this into a sort of twisted, tipsy version of the hashtag SBD. If you don't know what that is, I will explain. So, SBD really talks about the, you know, just the different view. It's like you're looking at the same picture because it's all the same sort of, you know, general idea in every card, but you get to catch it from just a little bit of different angles. I kind of did that actually with my collection video. I talked about all my full cards, mostly about the decks in general, but I showed all the full cards from all of my decks. And in SBD videos, they kind of just talk about the different angles on the archetype from all the different decks. So this part right here, this is my hobby, like within tarot. Tarot itself is something that, you know, the cards and when I sit and, and, and draw the cards, that's something that feels way more personal and spiritual. But this right here and the other shelves that I have full of books, this part is definitely over the top. I have more tarot books than I could read in the next five years. And I bought most of them this year because I've been on a deck buying ban and then I just started buying books. Okay, so here's what I would like to do. These are companion books for decks I don't have. I have in front of me the Voyager Tarot companion book, the Jane Austen Tarot companion book, the Motherpiece companion book, Hollow Quest, which is the Arthurian Tarot, and then there's Legend, the Arthurian Tarot, and its companion book is called A Keeper of Words, the Alchemical Tarot, the Rorig Tarot, Hopefully I pronounced that right. Victoria Regina Tarot and the Journey into Egypt Tarot. So what I'm going to do is pull a card from a deck. Let's just grab a deck from behind me here. Um, and I am going to just read a little bit from each of these books. So that could involve some weird silences while I'm reading some things, but we are all going to hope that Sober Me is very good at video editing. And I'm shuffling, and I'm drinking, okay, so I have shuffled. And now I just have to pick a card, here we go, I'm feeling this one. This is the card. Temperance! Okay, so we are going to look at all of the different temperances. That is a very weird word to say plural. Let's start with the Voyager Tarot Companion. Temperance. Oh, this is the one where it's all like little poems. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Also, I stuttered hardcore through this the last time I tried to read these out loud. <laughs> okay, so temperance in the Voyager Tarot is called art. There's a beautiful picture. The pictures in this particular companion book are almost the full page, so that's pretty awesome. Art is an alchemical energy bubbling up from within us all. Art is the reorganization into an ordered higher form. The energy of art is creative, seeing beauty and form in what may otherwise seem formless, meaningless, and bland. Art is water and light creating a rainbow, or coal and pressure creating a diamond. Art is the human expression of our divinity. It is the imposition of our will to translate to a higher plane, that which might otherwise remain chaotic. When you draw the art card, 
you have the potential of introducing beauty into a situation and reforming your perspective to it. The energy of art is poised and latent, able to transpose a leaden jumble into gold. So that one's view of art is talking more about sort of adjusting your own balance. It actually brought up extremes, talked about the coal and the pressure, and then it makes the diamonds. It talks about sort of like that idea of the two extremes coming together to make something, which is interesting. I like that, you know, talking about the process. Um, mm -hmm. Here is the picture of Temperance. She is pretty. She's like a feather. Oh, and it says art on there too. Interesting. There's a rune. And a Hebrew letter. Very fascinating. Okay, so I'm not going to read this whole thing because this one's getting a little bit longer. I didn't mind reading the whole poem, don't worry. This isn't going to turn into like audible edition of SVD. <laughs> oh, that would be cool too. Alright, let's pretend I didn't say that. After the death of the ego. So it's talking about death is the death of your ego. You are learning the lesson of equilibrium. So again, extreme. You went to the extreme for death and now you're trying to find your balance back in the middle. Equilibrium is depicted as a beautiful nude woman, a feather conceals her nakedness, which means that she has shed so much of life's... <laughs> oh, sorry. Shed so much of life that she has now become light as a feather, and like a feather, able to fly. Very interesting. She is handling the delicate energies of polarity... Harmonize the opposites through willpower. She is transforming her negative attributes into positive ones. Ooh, that's good. That's a good one. Dedicated to the astrological sign of Sagittarius. There is the symbol for Sagittarius on the card. Oh, I'm really into that. The idea of the transformation being about transforming yourself, transforming the negative qualities of yourself into positive qualities. That is a good one. I don't think I've ever thought about temperance like that before. Let's see what Jane had to say. This companion book is amazing and also annoying and also makes me want to read way more Jane Austen than I have. I'll be honest, I haven't read a ton. So the way that it works is you get a card description. Okay, so you, I'll just show you. This one kind of has its own deal going on. You get a picture of the card. You get the card description. So it's just telling you who's in the card and, and where they're supposed to be. Then it tells you the story of what this scene is depicting and from what novel. Then it tells you the card interpretation and why they chose that. And then there's this super awesome thing that says, what would Jane do? Which, I'll be honest, I do really enjoy the what would Jane do part. So, temperance. The description is Jane reaches out to Emma Woodhouse. This is from Emma, by the way. Sorry, I could have mentioned that. If you've read Emma, then you'll know what we're talking about. Two women look at each other with understanding and esteem. They stand beneath a fine and capable drawing of an angel who looks as if she is beaming down upon them. I'm not reading the whole storyline. You guys can read Emma or watch the amazing BBC special. Just throwing that out there. Can't remember if that one's on Netflix or not. If it's not, oh, I don't know how you'd watch it if it's not. I remember renting that movie from the library. Yes, renting from the library, the movie. Vitality, as opposed to delicacy, is but one of the contrasts between Emma and Jane. Hmm. 
Jane's advice, candor and discretion must go hand in hand. While there are times when concealment is necessary, it is not a virtue. On the other hand, one need not advertise every fleeting inner thought. Many times they are fleeting because they are meant to flee quickly from our minds. Paragons of virtue are not attractive, even in fiction, and we rarely become them in fact. Were we to continually attempt to be models of temperance, we would find ourselves veering endlessly from one side of a virtue to another, like a boat on stormy seas. Occasionally, we find ourselves suffering from that kind of queasy seasickness. When we do, nautical tradition reminds us that an even keel will get us through even the most querulous waters. So it shows two people that are opposite. So in the card depiction that you typically see of the angel with the two different cups and it's, you know, bringing, you know, pouring the two, the water between the two bowls and the Jane Austen tarot, it took out the water. There is technically an angel in the picture in the background, but you know, whatever. But it's talking about people and the two different sides of ourselves. Okay, so that's really talking about the two different sides of your personality. It's talking about being very, very open. Emma is a very loud, obnoxious person who just is out with who she is and, and everything that she thinks. And then Jane is sort of the more contained, very conservative, really concealing it. And it's talking about between the two of them. That angel in the background in the middle. So between that extreme, say whatever comes to your mind, to the very quiet, composed, way overthink everything. So it's talking about that center between. The ship is rocking on the ocean and we're trying to keep our ship steady. Well, that got a little rambly. When I get a little rambly, I should drink more. Okay. Let's see what Caitlin and John Matthews have to say about temperance. Okay, so they called temperance the cauldron. There's a description in the card. Sorry, there's a description of the card. Oh, here's a black and white picture of the card. Right there. It is called the cauldron. Okay. We get a description of the card, then we get the background. Give you some some history about what the the cauldron was to Arthur okay and then we get an archetypal meaning the cauldron represents the regeneration of all orders of creation in the land of a land I can't pronounce whoopsie there is no loss only changing and transmutation in this life beyond life. It is the source of spiritual empowerment to the initiate who goes beyond the gates of death and search for the grail. Ooh, I like the idea that there is no, you know, there's no loss. So it's taking everything that you have and finding a way to make it something useful. I love that. That's amazing. Okay, you can tell I haven't read this book yet because that was like super awesome. Very awesome. Okay, so they do have a, a divinatory meeting. And it actually, it's, it's still talking about that stuff, sort of recombining of resources, regeneration, mm -hmm. blending or merging with a new idea. I'm, that is totally unique. So that is sort of a point of view that I have never seen or read before from Temperance. Instead of thinking about the balance, because that's that's the word that comes to mind, right? You pull a temperance card and suddenly it's just balance, 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 and, and the middle, which we've been talking about polar opposites. We've been talking about, you know, finding the, the balance within ourselves. And this one is not talking about anything within. I mean, the regeneration can be from within, but this is really talking about resources. This is taking what you have and turning it into what you need and what you can use. That is so good. Okay, more booze. Let's see what the mother piece has to say about it. Okay, now the mother piece does like four pages per card. So if you could give me a second to sort of figure out what I want to do with this one. 
So chapter 16 is temperance, grounding cosmic energy. Obviously it's not card 16. Let me just throw that out there. It's just chapter 16. There is a depiction of the temperance from the mother piece. Can you see that? Kind of. Blending parts until fusion is achieved. The blessed union of opposites within and without. In ancient goddess worshiping cultures, the entire community participated in healing, ritual, dancing, chanting, and loving together without a need for individual shaman. Later, when these early cu cultures had been fragmented and disconnected and the goddess lost her unified power, illness became more prevalent and individual healers were needed. Religious activity was separated from the secular. Interesting. It really kind of goes into some history stuff here that I was not expecting. Particularly, it's talking about that it's interesting that the Christian church was in the middle of casting these witch hunts right at the time that male-centered medicine was on the rise. Fascinating. When you get this card in a reading, it means you are in balance. The natural movements of energy around and within you are in harmony and integrated. You are not fragmented or disconnected from yourself. Ooh, I like that. Internal integration. You may be experiencing a union with another person or perhaps with nature or the world around you. If you get this card in relation to someone else, then you have reached the union that was sought in the lover's card described in chapter 8. This is really about healing. It's pretty fascinating. An electrical current of energies pulsing through your body and soul. It is essential to stay grounded and conscious, being aware that the energy is coming through you, but it is not you. It is a gift to be managed with clarity and love, not to be used selfishly or against others. Interesting. You have the ability, the gift of healing, and can feel free to channel aid to someone else as long as you stay neutral and don't attach your ego to this power so this is really talking about and this is another instance of talking about temperance as being outside of yourself that is not talking about temperance i mean it does talk about you know being truly connected to yourself and being at one with who you are but it's talking about being able to give that gift out to others also fascinating so that's sort of the idea of temperance being the healer and saying you have the gift of healing you can heal you know if you pull that card you, you have the ability to heal someone oh i like that that's different too mm -hmm. so you can see how all of these different views are amazing and i can guarantee you especially with the jane austen that the like eight dollars I spent on that companion book is a fraction of what you would pay to get that deck. If anybody has that deck and they would like to sell it to me for a reasonable price that's not three hundred dollars, I'd be happy to talk to you. But I can't pay three hundred dollars for Jane Austen Tarot. Just put that out there. All right, let's see what the alchemical tarot has to say. Oh, hey, my book is signed by Robert in place. Who knew? There is. Oh, sorry about the shadow. Oh, I'm trying. Hang on, hang on. There we go. There is temperance in the alchemical tarot. Drink time. Art imitates nature. Ooh, good one. The last of the cardinal virtues that are explicitly illustrated in the trumps. Temperance is the virtue that leads to balance, health, and harmony. Balances the soul of appetite. Ooh, that's good stuff. She does not represent denial of desire, but satisfaction of desire in a way that is healthy and beautiful. It is the virtue of the musician and the artist and allows them to create balance and beauty in their works. Okay, wait a minute, because we need to talk about that. We need to have a little, little conversation about that. When you're talking about appetite, and in this situation, appetite does not mean food. It can mean anything. For example, the booze that I'm currently drinking. So you're talking about appetite. 
any time that that comes up for yourself or for other people and your knee-jerk response is to say, learn to say no, learn to walk away, that's a problem. And I almost think that like the idea, it was like, it's the pendulum swing of America over consumes everything to we all have to learn to say no, no, no. There is a middle there. Things that make you happy, to some extent you should do. If what you need to make you happy is tons and tons of booze, I'm not an alcoholic by the way, I feel like I should say that. I don't do this very often. I just enjoy it when I do, <laughs> which is what we're talking about here. If you need something, a ton of it all the time, clearly something is lacking within you and it is not whatever that thing is that you crave. Look at this, air quotes, that you crave. It's not the thing that you crave. There's something lacking within you spiritually. There's something lacking in your soul. There's something lacking in your heart. And that's what you need to satisfy. And then you can still enjoy the things that you enjoy just to a lesser, more healthy degree. And that's what he's talking about here. This temperance card is not about restraining yourself so that you're having a healthy amount and then missing it and being upset you can't have more. That is not the point. The point is filling the hole with what is truly actually lacking. Oh man, that's good stuff. Okay, so then it sort of talks about the the journey of how temperance changed over time from the Visconti Sforza to the, I believe it's pronounced Ferrera. And then the Tarot of the Marseille was the first time that it was given wings, the figure was given wings. The distraction of material from its solution by forced evaporation. It is the oldest and most fundamental stage of alchemy. Which obviously makes me think of booze right now because I'm drinking whiskey and we're talking about distillation. Just throwing that out there. Go tipsy tarot. Her virtue involves self-control but not denial. I'm obsessed with this. You shouldn't be feeling like you're denying yourself. It shouldn't be this big struggle. And if it is a struggle to say no, you need to start looking at why. Why is it so hard to say no to whatever the thing is that you can't say no to? Victoria Regina. Okay, I will admit this book is kind of in some bad shape. But again, I can afford the, I think I paid a little more for this one. I think this one was like 20 bucks. But I can pay 20 bucks for a book. I cannot afford how much it costs to get this deck. Woo. She's intense. She's like blowing some shit up. Oh, sorry. I try not to swear in case mom watches. Love you, mom. This is crazy. Like this looks like a wave and then there's this big explosion and there's like this salamander crawling out of it. Holy cow, this is crazy. Okay, so I was just telling you what's in the card, which I just described to you. I don't need to read that. Interpretation. Traditionally, temperance is the card of alchemy. It speaks of the need to blend action and emotion. Ooh, that's good. Action and emotion. The explosion seems to be a conflagration, but temperance holds it effortlessly in check. This is a card of integration and synthesis. Stands between light and dark, night and day. Okay, it lists a bunch of opposites, really. We don't need ten of those. Rather than be overwhelmed by this meeting of opposites, she stands serenely at the center. She seems to guide the leaping flames and waves, not through brute force or control, but through perfect understanding. Temperance indicates magical forces at play. Bring opposites together and discover what's created. Right actions occur naturally and almost inevitably. The alchemist prompts you to consider who you are and how you are working. Moving on from the leveling changes of death, you must strive to understand your place in the universe. Two more to go. Also, I should be drinking faster. Ooh, 
journey into Egypt. Let's find temperance. So you can kind of see the picture. Also, there's a bunch of notes in this one because, yes, I bought it used. There's the angel you can kind of see. There are dolphins swimming around at her feet. But I don't see the cups like you typically see. Anywho's, here we go. The full moon cycle of Pisces. There's loads of timing in this one. Ooh, there's a legend. Okay, I'm gonna try to give you some of this legend. Okay. So this is sort of a really interesting legend going on here. I was gonna read it to you, but it's actually kind of long. And this is already pretty much the audible version of SBD, so I don't want to read this whole thing. But it's about Isis tricking Ra into giving his eyes to her son. You usually see a winged figure with one foot on land and one foot on water pouring liquid or a rainbow of light from one vessel to another. The angel is clearly Isis in the midst of the mythos of Ra and Isis. She mixes a concoction of light. She shows herself as magician. The sun symbol on her brow symbolizes her knowledge of Ra's secret name. The act of pouring from one vessel to another symbolizes not only the mixing of a magical potion, but also extracting the secret name from Ra and transferring it to her unborn child Horus. In this story, Isis uses her knowledge of dark magic, which is really her knowledge of the waxing and waning light of the sun, to coax what she wanted from Ra. She just tricked him. Card meaning, the blending of opposites, or just blending two things. Magic and alchemy are the power of a name, the magic that comes with using the right words to get others to believe and support your ideas. It also speaks of the suppression of appetite as Isis gets what she wants. She restores Ra, and he regains his power. Okay, wait. We have to talk about this. Using the right words to get others to believe and support your ideas. That is something new. I haven't thought about that with temperance. The idea that you could create a balance between other people by convincing them to get on board with your ideas. Ooh, I like that. I definitely like that. You can be the angel convincing someone that your ideas are the way to go. That you have what, ooh. Ooh, I like it. That's a good one. Okay, a little more booze, and then we will get to the very last one from the legend, the Arthurian Tarot. Here is our picture. This is the same cauldron that it was talking about in the other one. Actually, that picture is, looks pretty much the same, too. Okay, that was a lie. They don't look pretty much the same. It's just the same cauldron and there's still the three strings that are supposed to come from like the different worlds and it's all multiple girls and... Okay, so because it's coming from the same legend, I would imagine. So it starts with the meaning. Is that what it did there? Meaning, moderation, patience, diplomacy, consistent behavior, successfully mixing two different attributes of the personality, Guarding against extremes. Visionary art. Talks about the name of the cauldron. That's all the same. I do like the slight shift in perspective. It's still just talking about the polar opposites. And it's still just talking about balance but when it says guarding against extremes it's just a little bit different and I think that's what makes this whole idea of SBD so great because you're taking something that is essentially the exact same but you're just twisting it just a little bit you're taking the one picture and you're looking at it from every single tiny different angle and yes that angle is a little bit closer to the standard this angle was something totally different this was talking about stuff it was talking about taking things and repurposing them so you can use them. Which I thought was awesome. This was talking more about the polar opposites, or maybe that was that one, who even knows. This was talking about the two totally different people trying to meet in the middle. This one was good too, I can't even remember what it was now. Oh, that's great. 
ooh, that was talking about denial and filling what you're lacking, not with that thing it is that you crave. So the idea, not of denial, but of satisfying the need at the base. Ooh, that was good stuff. Actually, all of this was great stuff. The whole idea of temperance is an amazing lesson. I talk a lot about feeling like tarot is lessons that we need to be learning. And every single one of every single one of these angles of temperance is an incredible lesson that we should all be trying to bring into our daily lives. It's a hard one. Definitely okay with saying that. So this is my tipsy tarot version of SPD. I hope that you guys enjoyed your drink. I definitely enjoyed mine. And there will be another episode sometime of Tipsy Tarot because this is probably the best part about my YouTube channel for me personally. And if you guys want to talk to me about anything tarot or if you would like a free reading, email me at foolonajourney at gmail.com. And thanks for watching.